In this video, we are going to study stationarity with augmented decay Fuller test in R. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, this is an educational video only and no professional advice is included within it. Okay, so let's go into R Studio. So the first step within the video is we need to load the corresponding packages. Therefore, we comment this as step one, packages. And for loading packages, we use library function and within it, the name of the package. So for this video, we'll be using forecast for time series characteristics. Then also with library function, we'll be using ggplot2 for the corresponding chart. And last also with library function, we'll be using tseries for augmented DK Fuller test. To run these code lines, we go ahead, select them, and then we can either click run or we can press Control enter on the keyboard. Then we continue with step number two, which is a data. For data, we're going to create an object named mData, which is equal to air passengers object. This air passengers object is part of datasets package, which is already included with our installation. And we want to visualize part of this data. So we use head function and within it mData object. So to run this code lines, now we're going to select them and we're going to press Ctrl Enter on the keyboard. And as we can see, this creates the mData object within the global environment as a time series of length 144 observations. And part of this data is being printed within the console. We have the first six observations from January to June of 1949. And this is monthly airline passenger numbers in thousand. If you want to read the full documentation of this data, you can go into the help tab and search for the object name, which is air passengers, select it. And then you'll see the documentation below, as mentioned previously, monthly airline passenger numbers in thousands from 1949 to 1960. So now we're going to continue with ranges delimiting. And we're going to create two ranges, a training range for model fitting and a testing range for model forecasting. So we begin with the training range. So we create an object named T data, which is equal to, and here we're using window function and within it the parameters X, which is equal to M data, comma, end equals to C, 1958, 12. And then we're going to create the testing range, which is going to be the object name F data equals to, again, window. And within it, we have X equals to M data. But in this case, start equals to C, 1959,1. So as we can see, we have the training range, which is the first 10 years of data from 1949 to 1958. That's where we see the end at month 12 of 1958. And then we have the testing range, which is the last two years of data, 1959 and 1960. That's why we see that it starts at 1959 month one. In this video, we'll only be working within the training range. So to run this code lines, we go ahead, select them, and we press Ctrl Enter on the keyboard. And let's go ahead and visualize the training range data within its corresponding chart. So in this case, we'll be using auto plot function and within it parameter object equals to T data. And we are going to add LABS labels. Y, that's the vertical axis label, which is going to be air passengers. Then comma X, that's the horizontal axis label, which is going to be year. And to run this code line as it is a single code line, we select any part of it and then we press Ctrl Enter on the keyboard. And right here within the plots tab, we can see the chart. So we zoom into it. And we have air passengers on the vertical axis, year on the horizontal one and the solid black line, which is the training range data. So now that we have the data ready, we can continue with step number three, which is first 
order stationarity. And for this, we are going to study augmented DK Fuller test. And for this, we'll be using adf.test function and within it the following parameters x equals to t data, training range data, alternative for alternative hypothesis equals to and within quotations stationary, comma, k equals to 12. So k is training range data differences lag order, and here we included 12 because data has a monthly frequency. Notice that adf.test function includes constant and trend variable by default. Also notice that we need to check and test if constant, trend variable, and this training range data difference number of lags are needed within augmented DK Fuller test. Also, notice that ranges delimiting and augmented DK Fuller test function parameters were only included as educational examples, which can be modified according to your needs. So let's go ahead and run this code line again. We select any part of it and we press Ctrl Enter on the keyboard. And we can see the results being printed right here within the console. Before we go into these results, if you want to read the full documentation of this adf.test function, again, you can go into the help tab and search for the function name, or you can input here within the console question mark adf.test without parenthesis and enter key. And as we can see, this opens the documentation right here. So back into the results, we have augmented DK Fuller test, the data is the training range data. We have the augmented DK Fuller test statistic, lag order, approximated p-value, and alternative hypothesis. So regarding this augmented DK Fuller test associated approximated p-value, we have the individual null hypothesis that previous period training range data coefficient is equal to zero, or that training range data has a unit root. If rejected, Training range data is first order trend stationary or assumed with a constant mean around a deterministic trend when including 12 lags in augmented DK Fuller test. If not rejected, training range data is not first order trend stationary or assumed with a non constant mean around a deterministic trend when including 12 lags in augmented DK Fuller test. Okay. So with this, we finish with the code file, so we can go ahead and save it. And with this, we also finish with this video. Thank you for watching.